Thank you, everyone. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Um, uh, this is actually the presentation today about a study we started in 2012, a uh, project with the three faculty. There is a uh, Dr. Uh, David Hodge is a principal investigator, and he has widely written about religious spirituality, and also included so in Islam as well. And that's me here in the middle, and then there is Dr. Hussein, Altaf Hussein at Howard University. So this is the three faculty been working in that particular project since 2011. It's called uh, Mental Health, Wellbeing, and uh, uh, health, health Care and Wellbeing of Muslim Mental Health. So this is uh, the modeling the relationship between discrimination, depression, substance use, and spirituality with Muslim American and a national study which is a sample of uh, 269, and it's published already in 2005, 2015, at the Social Work Research Journal, with the same title. Uh, this is an overview of the presentation. I have a background, purpose of study, of the goals of study, literature review, methodology, research finding, implication, and then ended with the conclusion. Background. Uh, when I'm looking at the background about the Muslims and how they've been treated and also with uh, there is a large number, there is an increasing number of Muslim, um, Muslim in the United States. Uh, uh, the an estimate is about uh, almost like 7 million America, uh, uh, Muslim American in the United States. However, maybe this number is not really accurate because we know that there is a, a lot of Muslims in deny of their, and they don't want to disclose their identity or being as a Muslim because the backlash after 9-11 and all that. And since 9-11, the years have been, Muslim have been targeting of discrimination largely since 9-11 and recent attack in, in Europe and other places. Relatively little research. There is a little research have been done in the area of discrimination was related to depression and also substance use uh, and considering and looking at through the spirituality. Uh, the purpose of study is to fill out the gap in literature, examining the relationship between discrimination and depression, substance abuse. So what the effect of uh, spirituality on discrimination as well as on depression and substance abuse. It was, uh, I mean, uh, we predicted uh, the, the model that predicted there is a, the higher discrimination would predict a higher level of post depression and also substance use among Muslim Americans. Also, we predicted that a spirituality would mediate the relationship between the post uh, health outcomes, which discriminate this uh, between di discrimination and both whole health outcomes, which is some substance use and also depression. Muslims and discrimination. When I looked at the literature review, actually, there is a large number of literature about discrimination in general and depression among uh, many groups and minorities like African Americans, Chinese American, Latinos, and also Muslim Americans, Jewish American. Uh, Muslims also may be target of this discrimination of uh, various methodological approach, like there is many studies that has quantitative studies that conducted of targeting Muslim and discrimination. Uh, qualitative study, like conducting subgroups and in-depth interviews. Uh, Meta-analysis studies, so there are several studies of all the three different methodology uh, across the literature. Discrimination has been documented toward Muslims uh, in various areas like hiring process, employment, at school, as well as uh, in the media, like we show the, the news and the media and uh, social media as well. Female Muslim has been targeting as well of the victims of discrimination because of the headscarf or hijab. Actually, we, uh, we just got the last week about an acceptance of paper. Uh, we call it, uh, the title of the paper is called Hijab and Discrimination and Depression among Muslim Americans is going to be at the Social Work Journal. Has, has got accepted for publication, but it's not still, it still is not in the press yet. It's under, you know, it's going to be published maybe this summer. Uh, discrimination, depression, and substance use. Uh, there is a positive association between discrimination, 
depression, and depression relatively with a diverse population. Uh, similar relationship that between uh, the between discrimination and substance abuse. So the, there is a positive association between discrimination and depression, which is the people who are victims of uh, discrimination will have uh, create have more higher level of depression, as well as the same thing, the people who are victims of uh, the, the discrimination, they're gonna have higher level of substance use. A stress and coping framework. Uh, from the using the, this framework of a stress and coping mechanism, we are uh, we hypothetically talk about like the relationship between stress and uh, health outcomes, like uh, the depression or even substance abuse, are actually related to uh, the stress that coming from the discrimination that has been victim of discrimination, and spirituality here playing as a coping mechanism that can mediate the relationship between discrimination on, sub uh, on substance use and also depression. So this is, uh, this is pretty much when the person who are getting victim of the discrimination or targeting of discrimination, this person actually get like his stress level or her stress level will getting uh, elevated and then it's getting higher level of uh, depression as well as higher level of consuming alcohol or even a smoking cigarette, which is substance abuse, as well as uh, the person who are being victim of discrimination. So the, the, the spirituality can play an important role here to reduce the level of depression as well as the level of consuming alcohol or even a smoking cigarette or uh, substance use. Spirituality versus protective, uh, as a protective carbon mechanism. So as I mentioned, uh, uh, spirituality playing as a protective factor uh, uh, and discrimination is a risk factor in this study. So spirituality can as a playing as a protective mechanism, carbon mechanism to individuals with a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, research uh, has examined also the effect of spirituality on both depression and substance use. Muslims' personal connections, like connection with God or Allah, can actually protect you from being depressed or even being consuming uh, or being subs using uh, uh, substance or substance abuse. The method. For this study, actually, when we started in 2012, we started pilot study uh, uh, with a hard copy of 20 participant men and women in Washington DC area in a several Islamic mosques and Islamic centers. Then after we did the pilot study for about six months, we launched the study into a survey, online survey, and we collected the data of 269 of Muslim Americans across the, uh, the United States, and we recruited the, the, the participant from uh, more than 22 Islamic centers and mosques across the United States. We pretty much sent them the survey and they shared it in their websites. Uh, the sample actually, we collected the samples so using a, a snow pole sampling, convenient sample, non-random sample. And uh, the, we used the structural equation modeling for to, to, to uh, data analysis. Demographic, uh, this is a demographic uh, snapshot of what uh, the questions are included, actually. You can see here, we ask a question about age, gender, race, ethnicity, like nation, uh, nation of origin, uh, are you US uh, born or not US born, primary language, English, other language, what other language we have a, a link here, Arabic, uh, Hindu, Urdu, other languages marital status education. So all these are whether a question in the demographic questionnaire. Uh, we ask about discrimination as well. The question actually was like in the past, are you called offensive names? Being as Muslims. Depression, we use the short, uh, the short form of the Center of Epidemiological Studies for Depression Scale, which you see ESD4. And uh, uh, for the substance use, actually, we have two items. We ask questions about, like, how often do you drink alcohol? How often do you smoke cigarette? 
and the response is a, is a five level of Likert scale from never to always. Measuring spirituality, there is a three items actually uh, that been asking for to measure spirituality among Muslim of the sample. Uh, like this question is, how often do you pray five times? You pray five times a day, read the Quran more than two times a week, um, perform ablution or wudu. Uh, it's uh, how often and how, how many times a day. A five point Likert scale as well. So here is a, this is a model that we, uh, we are uh, rejecting for that model that discrimination can lead to a higher depression, higher use of substance use. So the person who victim of discrimination will be have, a, have a higher level of depression and also is gonna be consuming more substance, like will be smoking or drinking. I know in Islam that drinking is for prohibited, but we have to ask in these questions because that is in literature that discrimination can lead to either or both of them. And then spirituality is, is, is as a mediator factor or a variable that mediates the relationship between discrimination and depression and dis discrimination of substance abuse. Means like this kind of variable that actually has an impact which is gonna reduce the level of depression and reduce the level of substance use because of the spirituality as a mediator factor between the three main important factors here. The result actually, the, as, I, as you see, the sample is 269, uh, and the result here is uh, talking about, like, this is the average years of 78 years old. The majority of the sample were female with 69%, uh, 63% non-Middle Eastern ethnicity, 51% or 50, almost 52% is born outside the United States, 61 spoke primary English at home, 57% of the sample are married, and 78% uh, have education at least a four years degree. This is the structural equation model uh, that with the numbers here that when we done the, uh, the data analysis. The major finding here, there is a partial support of what we found about our model actually, our projected model. Discrimination predicted higher level of depression uh, and depressive symptoms. Discrimination, however, did not predict a higher level of substance abuse or substance use among Arab, Arab Muslim Americans, which is, this is contradictory to the, the one we, uh, we projected. We projected that discrimination will predict a higher substance use, but because it's a Muslim sample, which is, uh, that uh, makes sense here, because the Islam is prohibited uh, consuming alcohol. So that is why discrimination, the person who are Muslim, victim of discrimination, will not have a higher level of substance use because Islam is prohibited that. But you can have higher level of depression. A spirituality did not function as a mediator. We are projected that the, the spirituality will mediate the relationship between discrimination substance use and also depression, but actually did not, it's a separate factor that we found out. Rather than spirituality exhibit as an independent effect, means like the, the spirituality actually is completely, uh, is a completely separate factor or separate variable that can impact the, the person or the Muslim, uh, their way of like being the level of depression or even the substance use. In other words, higher level, like rather than the spirituality exhibit an independent effect in both depression and substance use, in other words, the higher level of spirituality predict lower level of depression and substance use and the part of effect of discrimination. Implication for practice. This study actually has a large implication for practice, actually, given the association between discrimination, depression, and effort to call for address discrimination. So we have to address the discrimination directed toward the Muslim Americans. And also, the, the study highlighted the importance of using the spirituality uh, and spirituality beliefs and religious, religious, religious uh, beliefs in, uh, in the coursework and also in treatment and counseling. 
uh, especially more specifically when we use the CBT, cognitive behavior therapy and treatment, we have to look at the spirituality beliefs of the, of the patient and especially particularly working with a Muslim client. Limitation of the study. Of course, the study is a, is a cross-sectional uh, uh, study and also the sample is a convenient snowball sample. It's non-random sample, so it's very hard to, uh, you make it the case for generalizability. So the, the generalizability actually is limited to the sample size, which is 269 of Muslim American. Self-reported measurement, this is an online survey, uh, which is uh, it's very hard to, uh, identifies the information, verifies the information, anyone can get in online and fill out the survey. Uh, and also the social desirability actor, a factor here in that survey as well can play an important role because the participant can fill out the survey in a way that, that saying that someone, for instance, that they smoking a uh, cigarette or drinking alcohol. Uh, maybe that person online, they will say, no, I'm not really smoking cigarette or drinking cocoa. It's so, social desirability is a very, very negative factor in the online survey because it can, the, the participant will fill out the survey in the way that make you happy. So if you ask the person, that, uh, do you drink alcohol, how often? It will say no, especially for Muslim uh, community. Uh, uh, Cross-sectional uh, data, Cross-sectional, always we have a problem with cross-sectional design because of the causality between the variation and the correlation between the variables in the study because we, uh, we always uh, recommended to have a longitudinal study over to test things that or even measure uh, the attitudes or even like uh, depression over time for someone has the lower depression or higher depression. Uh, so uh, these are the limitations for the study. The conclusion, uh, this is the first kind of study to examine the effect of discrimination and spirituality on depression among Muslim Americans. Uh, discrimination particularly in the form of calling or name calling may be a risk factor of depression. I, I remember I being called uh, when I was in graduate school after uh, during 9-11, I being called as a terrorist. I came from Egypt in 1999 and then 2001, 9-11 happened. I was in the second year of my graduate school at Washington University in St. Louis. I have some of my classmates call me a terrorist. I have some, I got some messages on my phone and I have on my front door of my home, I have some nasty messages that ter terrorists go back home. So I have my wife wearing hijab, so she experienced all kind of victims of being discrimination as well and you know, so these are the things that, so, so being calling name or even discrimination is a risk factor that can lead to a higher level of depression and substance use among uh, Muslim Americans. Spirituality may be a protective factor in habit depression. Actually, the people who are really depressed or always have a high anxiety when they go to the mosque, when they pray, when they meet with uh, imams, they feel much better. So it's uh, so spirituality believe uh, is actually playing as a protective factor uh, to reduce the level of depression among Muslim Americans. Uh, I think I ended. If you have any question, please ask. One or two questions? All right, so let's go ahead right into question and answer. Probably just take a couple. Anyone has a note card or probably? But it's uh, still in press, so it's going to be maybe in the summer or maybe in uh, uh, you know, fall or spring. But the article is called Hijab, Discrimination and Depression Among Muslim Women. Yeah, if you Google, uh, I think if you Google me and a scholar, uh, Google a scholar or e email me, 
I can get you a copy once it uh, gets uh, published. I can send you an electronic copy. I will, thank you. And then the other comment was um, to reference that you may think about like, the hate crimes. I just wanted to add something um, that in regards to hate crimes, um, we don't know the actual numbers because it's still a voluntarily reported by the local police. So the FBI doesn't require hate crimes to be reported. So they could be much, much greater than what we are seeing. I agree totally because uh, I did, uh, when I was in my graduate school as well, I did a paper about discrimination against Muslim and Arab American post 9 11. And I have to go to uh, the police station to get the uh, collect data on how many people have been victim. I didn't get any data. Uh, it, not only this, I've been accused of uh, spying on something or of doing something with international terrorists overseas. And I almost lost my visa, the student visa, because I got into trouble with the people think that there is a group, like uh, a terrorist group, that they sponsor my study because I want to show that Americans are putting people into the jail or a lot of Muslims are mistreated. So I got all kind of stuff, so I, I stopped. I haven't done it. I did not even publish it. I have a question. Sure. Yes. Um, you mentioned um, one of the treatment programs in the Latin Islamia. How do we find out more about that? Um, there are a couple of papers that describe it. Uh, maybe Dr. Ark can. Uh, There's a uh, poster um, out there where they have the information there. All right, so that uh, is about it for this panel. Let's give them one last round of applause. That was very well done. Was... All right, we'll now adjourn for lunch and prayers. Thank you. Oh, yeah,